Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. I got a really neat tool to show off today. It's an Android app called Pluvia. And essentially this app is an unofficial Steam client. So you can use it to log into your Steam profile, then download, install, and play some Steam games. Now this project comes with a whole lot of caveats. It has to be DRM free games and mostly only lightweight games will play anyway. And even then it's pretty hit or miss which games will actually boot. And there are other ways to play PC games on Android. This is not the only tool out there, but it's probably the simplest one I've ever seen. So in this video, I want to show you really quickly how to set it up on any Android based handheld or phone or tablet and also show off some of the games that I was able to get running and others that just did not load at all. And I'm hoping this will be a pretty quick one. So grab a snack, a drink and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's first get set up with Pluvia. I'm gonna use my Retroid Pocket 5 right here. First thing you need to do is go to the Pluvia GitHub page. I'll have it linked in the video description. From there, go into the releases section and then grab the latest release. There's only one app that you can actually download. It's the Universal APK. So just go ahead and download that. Then once it's done, go ahead and open it up. It's gonna ask, do you want to install the app? And then just go through the prompts. Now, once you open up the app, it'll ask you whether or not you want to allow notifications. And from there, it's just going to be adding in your Steam username and password. If you'd like, you can also use the QR scan option. So you can take your phone, log into Steam, then scan it with your phone and that'll log you in there. And once you've logged in, it'll start loading up your games list. And of note here, they do have the option to tip the team. I'll leave a link to this tip directly down below if you want to give them a little bit of money for their effort. Anyway, that's really it when it comes to install and setting up Pluvia. From there, you'll be able to scroll through your games list. Now, this is a truncated list, so I think they are filtering out games that are just not gonna run at all. And even then, there are gonna be some games that are probably way too powerful, like Bioshock Infinite, so I would not recommend trying that one out. Instead, I've been focusing on more lightweight titles, you know, those that are like one gigabyte or lower. So let's try this one right here, Garden Story, which I tested on another device and did work. So you can click on the game, and then it's gonna give you an option to install. After you click on install, it's gonna say, you know, it's going to take up 55 megabytes of space and then the entire container will be about 90 megabytes and then I've got about 100 gigabytes to spare. So it does give you an idea of how much internal storage this is going to take. And it is worth noting that the developers are thinking about putting the storage somewhere else besides the internal storage. So for example, you could potentially save this on an SD card or in a more easily accessible folder. But as it stands right now, yes, it will take up internal storage space. So let's go ahead and hit proceed. So now it's actually going to download the game from the Steam server servers and it might be pretty quick. You can see this one is actually going pretty fast or it might get hung up or take a little bit longer. Either way, you can see that after less than a minute, we now have the game available to play. So I'm going to hit play here and this will start up the game. The first time around, it'll have this loading screen. I think what it's doing here in the back end is maybe installing any sort of necessary things in the background, but then also potentially grabbing your Steam cloud save as well, because many of these games do support cloud saves. Now, after it's done loading, it's going to open up WinLater, which is a Windows container available for Android. And so this essentially is the same thing as trying to load a game directly via WinLater, but it does all that work for you. So it's just an all in one container. And as you can see, yes, it started up the game. And so all the controls automatically work. This is not going to happen with every game, but you can see here that yes, I'm able to start it up. Now, I'm not sure if this one does support cloud saves because I do not have a cloud save for this game, but you can see that I can start up a new game. And there were plenty of other games that did have cloud saves when I tested it, but also some that did not. And so it will be a little bit hit or miss. Either way, yes, you can see that this game Garden Story is working. Now, this is kind of a best case scenario because all the controls are working fine and then also we're getting audio. This is not something that I found with every single game that I've tested. But at the very least you can see that yes this game looks to be fully playable and it seems to be running at full speed. It's a bit of a slower game you know this is supposed to be like one of those cozy games but still it's pretty neat to be able to play this Windows game directly on Android and I really didn't have to do anything other than sign into my Steam profile and then download it. Now to exit out of a game and get back to the main menu, you can either just swipe left to go back or you can actually just press the back button if you have that on your handheld. It'll take you back to this main menu. From there, you can just go through your games list, find a game that you want to try out and then download it. After you've downloaded a bunch of games, you can go and hit this filter option and then it'll show all the games that you have installed. As of right now, I only have Garden Story, but this will start to fill up. And if you do download a game, you decide you don't want to actually play it, or maybe it doesn't work, you want to uninstall it, then you're going to press this three dot menu right here, and then you can uninstall it. That'll free up that extra space. Also of note that you can actually access your friends list right here. I'm not going to click on it. I don't want to show you all my friends and what they're doing, but this is where you can go in here and actually see them. And they are working on adding a chat feature as well. So I do think that this is an app that you will probably see more about in the future. 
Okay, now let's talk about some of the games that I was able to get working on Pluvia, and it is not a lot. I want to say that there are more games that won't run than actually will. But also bear in mind, this is a very early app, and so I don't have high expectations. The way I see it, any game that can run on this is an added bonus. After all, with an Android-based device, you'll be able to play Android games, you'll also be able to do emulation, and now there are a select few PC titles you can play as well directly from Steam. And down below, I'll leave a link to a text file of all the games that I tried out and which ones were working and which ones were not. So you can immediately see whether or not your favorite game is even worth trying. So let's walk through my testing. I spent about three or four hours altogether, kind of just playing through a bunch of lightweight titles to see what would work. And I switched between three different devices and chipsets. I started with the Odin 2 Portal, which has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And I also used the Ionio Pocket Evo, which has the Snapdragon G3X Gen 2. And these are very similar chipsets and quite powerful. In addition, I tested out quite a few games with the Retroid Pocket 5, which has a Snapdragon 865. And I will say that when it comes to these lighter weight games, it's not really about performance, but whether or not the game itself is just going to boot. To start, the game needs to be DRM free, but then also, you know, you never know what kind of game engine is actually going to work with WinLater. So again, this is one of those things that as WinLater, as well as this app get updated over time, we will probably see improved compatibility. Now, in terms of games that I couldn't get to work, I put them into two different categories. The first category is that if it actually boots into the game, but I'm not able to actually start the game, either because one, the control are not working or it just doesn't actually load into the game itself. And there were quite a few games that were like that, but more often than not, the game would just crash as soon as you tried to start it. For example, I thought it'd be really cool to have the PC version of Bellatro. Now, there already is an Android port of this game available, but it would be really cool to be able to use my Steam cloud saves between the two. But unfortunately, even though the loading screen shows up initially, it just crashes back to the main window. And so when it comes down to it, yes, there are many games that will not play, but part of the fun in this is just testing it to see if maybe your favorite game does. And so now let's talk about some of the games that I did get working. The first one here is called Annalyn. This is a puzzle platformer that's not unlike Pac-Man in its overall gameplay. You have to pick up these little jewels, and you're also being chased by these snakes, which kind of look like the ghosts. And if you pick up one of the bigger jewels, you can chase them for a limited time. Either way, this game ran great, and the audio worked on it as well. Another game that works really well is The Messenger. This is the same development team as Sea of Stars, and it's an action platformer, kind of like Ninja Gaiden, but a bit of a role-playing game as well. This one plays great, but it doesn't have any audio, so it is a little bit of a shame because this has a pretty awesome soundtrack. Another game I got working is 198X, or 1980X. This one has a bunch of different styles, depending on the level that you're playing. You can see here the first level is a beat-em-up. Unfortunately, this one does not have audio, and also the controls are messed up, so you're not able to jump. In fact, if you press the B button while in the game, it actually will kick you out to the main menu, so the controls are definitely wonky on this one. Another game that worked well is Cosmic Collapse. This is actually a Pico 8 game that's also available on Steam. It's one of my favorite of the Suica watermelon style games where you drop a bunch of things and then when you have two of them matching press against each other, then they turn into a bigger one and you just keep on going from there. And this one works flawlessly, including the awesome soundtrack. So this is a lot of fun to play. I also was able to get Blasphemous to work, although the controls and just the overall gameplay was a little bit stuttery. And this is a game that uses, you know, a lot of quick reflexes. And so this is probably not an ideal way to play Blasphemous, but it's pretty cool to see it working here. Another game that I got working is Cat Quest, and this one did actually sync up with my Steam Cloud saves. And so I was able to resume a game that I had started, you know, a couple months back. Another game that worked is called Doodlings. This is a sports game here. And fun fact about this one is that a couple of the commentators are the same guys that are on the Nerd Nest podcast with me. And so you'll be able to hear commentary from Bill and Rich as you play this game. It's pretty cool. This game's called Flynn, Son of Crimson, and it's actually a Metroidvania platformer. And this one works really well too, including audio. This might be one of the best games that I've tried using the Pluvia app, just because everything worked really well, it was nice and smooth, and it sounded great as well. I also was able to get Super Meat Boy running, and this one works pretty well. It's a little bit stuttery here and there, and then also the audio is all messed up, to the point where it's like making really grating sounds, so you're going to want to mute this one if you play it. Another game that I tried out that worked is Iconoclast. This one is also a Metroidvania-style game, and it looks really good, so this is probably an ideal game to play on this as well. Another game that works really well is UFO 50. Not only does it work really well in terms of video and audio and controls, but it also uses Steam Cloud saves. And so even though there is a way to port this over to Android natively, it's kind of neat that you're able to resume your game and go back and forth. 
And then finally, the last game that I tested is Pizza Tower. Now this one does run and it doesn't look too bad, but I found that it is a little bit wonky in terms of the controls and it does feel a little bit stuttery. And so this is also a pretty fast paced game. And so I think this is one of those where it probably isn't gonna play very well, but it is cool that it actually boots in the first place. And really that's about it when it comes to the games that I tested that were actually working. Now bear in mind, this is all a work in progress. And so who knows, maybe two weeks from now, many of these other games will actually run, but I will leave that text document down in the video description below if you wanna see the other games that I tried that just were not working. Either way, I think this is a really neat tool to be able to just log into your Steam account and then play some of your games. Yes, it's through a Windows container, but it's still really cool that we can even do that in the first place. It does give me hope that, you know, sometime in the future, we will have some sort of translation layer between Android and Windows where we will be able to access more of our Steam library in the future. I've been slowly building up a Steam library over the years, and I would love to be able to play that on other platforms besides just your typical handheld PCs. Anyway, that's really about it for this video. I'll I'll leave links to all this stuff down below and let me know what you think down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.